Every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain one once we grow up. Paolo Picasso. It is three in the morning, December 11th, 2021. I'm getting ready to drive from my home in Las Vegas to San Diego, California for my first ever gallery show in my old neighborhood of Logan Heights. I'm nervous, excited, happy. I'm scared all at once. Being able to go back to the city that was my home for so many years, the city that to me represented the American dream, the city that allowed me to believe that I can be anything I wanted to be, a beautiful place with even more beautiful, amazing people that love their community and are proud of their heritage. I am honored and humbled that I was allowed to show my art in this neighborhood. It always felt like my home, but I've always been so far away, I didn't know if I was gonna be accepted back. Little did I know that this day will become one of the best days of my life. A day that is up there with the birth of my two daughters. And since that day, I've cried tears of pure happiness over and over again. I can't believe what happened. One of the best ideas I ever had was to invite my friend to come along this trip with me and record everything. Maybe we get to get some cool shots, but mostly because I wanted to remember that day and have something to show my kids and grandkids. The thing that happened, the people that met, memories we made are so incredible that if we didn't record it, no one would believe it, including us, and we were there. I hope you enjoy. Going on this trip, I knew that I had a bunch of surprises for everybody that was with me. One of the best surprises that I knew that was coming up, I was invited to go to Chicano Park. Now, Chicano Park is a staple and a historical landmark for just Chicano people and Mexican people in general, not just for San Diego, but for the entire world. Going there and seeing the murals, people walked there were like Cesar Chavez and Martin Luther King, and I was just excited to be there. I always dreamed as a little kid to at least paint a mural or walk the streets there at Chicano Park, and I was just really excited to go. I had met a friend earlier that was in charge of a lot of the murals for San Diego and Tijuana, and he invited us to go because they would be painting a mural that day. I didn't know what was actually going to happen, but we were just excited to be there. We get to Chicano Park and everybody gets out of the car. My manager, Alex, is walking around just looking at all the beautiful murals. My boy Tags is getting the camera ready and I'm texting my friend and asking him, hey man, where you at? We're here. Sends me a text back and says, I'm three hours out. There's, you're gonna have to go introduce yourself, which kind of scared the hell out of me because honestly, I just didn't know what to say. I walked up to the bottom of the scaffolding and I just kind of waved at the first person that looked at me. I introduced myself and I told him I was an artist. I was having a show that day. I showed him a couple of my paintings and he asked if he could see it because I had one in the car. And I showed him the painting, he got super excited. At that point he looked at me and he said, do you want to go meet Victor? I know the name Victor Ochoa because he's almost like the godfather of Chicano Park. He has over a hundred murals. He's an amazing man. We studied about him in elementary school and junior high. And I just found out that I'm going to meet him. So I asked him if I could bring my friends along and if we could record it. And he was like, sure. I remember walking up the scaffolding and every floor that we went up, it scaffolding moved. He was telling me how they were painting the entire thing with 30 gallons worth of metallic gold flake. And the pillar was just gonna shine in the sunlight. So amazing. We kept going up the scaffolding and higher and higher we went, we kept noticing that the scaffolding kept shaking. We got to the section where Victor was at, and I just remember looking at him. From behind, he was just an older gentleman with his walking stick and an airbrush in hand, and he was just painting. I never met him before. I've only seen pictures of him in books. He turned around, and I was just in awe. And then he started swaying side to side. And I was like, what is going on? And I just thought to myself, and he looked at me and he said, you gotta dance up here, mijo can't be up here if you're dancing and right there I realized that man I love this guy I introduced myself he you know showed him a couple of my my paintings I told him I was having a show he started telling me about the work that they were doing at that point 
my assistant, which is my fiance, and my manager, and my boy Tags, they were, he was recording, they were walking around looking at everything. The first gentleman that invited us up asked me if I wanted to go to the very top. I said, hell yeah. So we walked up all the way to the very top of the scaffolding. I was touching the bottom of Coronado Park, or like Coronado Bridge, which to me, I wanted to cry at that point. He asked me if I wanted to stand on this ledge and you saw all of San Diego. Coronado Bridge starts in one of the Hispanic neighborhoods of San Diego, what people considered a low income neighborhood. And it takes you over this bridge to Coronado Island, which is one of the richest areas in San Diego. So that definitely didn't get past me. As I'm walking around, I'm looking at it. I asked, you know, I asked the guy that invited us up um, if he could take a picture of me. At that point, I see my boy walk up with his camera, looking freaked out because the whole thing is shaking like crazy. I see my manager, Alex, and the first thing that I could think of as she's looking at all of this was, Alex, this doesn't ever happen. I lived in this city for so many years, and there's people that have lived here for 50 years, even longer, have never seen this. So we go back down, we talk to Victor for a little bit. I invite him to the show. I knew he probably couldn't come because they're busy. And we got downstairs. And at that point, we realized that this was just the beginning. This is how we started off our day. And it put a bar so high that I'm like, how are we gonna beat this? And it was just the start of our trip to San Diego. So next, after we got off of the scaffolding, we started walking towards the gallery, which was just a couple of blocks up the street. As we're walking, I'm trying to explain to my manager, Alex, just what the significance of this area of this park is. Now, Chicano Park in Logan Heights has, is a very tight-knit community. They don't just let anybody in. Outsiders uh, that try to come in and try to be a part of it, they're very scared of those kind of people because so many people have come in and tried to take over the neighborhood. They try to buy out businesses. They try to, you know, buy the land that they've lived in, their parents have lived in, and kick them out. Gentrification is a very real thing, and they fight against it very, very hard. So the fact that I was even allowed to be back there in this historic place, to me, meant the world. And I was fighting tears the entire time. I just remember telling Alex that, as I was trying to explain to her, being that she's new to the country, She's only been here for a few years. It was hard for her to, to realize what all this meant without being told and shared what the story of this, this city is. We finally make it to the gallery and it was time to set up for the show. So we walk towards the gallery, which is Logan Avenue Galleria. Um, in the front is an amazing ice cream shop where they have homemade ice creams. Some of the best ice cream I've ever had. In the back, they have a really small but beautiful gallery space. When I first met them and I introduced myself weeks ago, I just felt like I needed to do something there. Meeting everybody from that neighborhood weeks, weeks prior, I, I met um, this amazing bookstore owner. She moved from the Bay Area down to San Diego, opened up this amazing bookstore, became a staple now to the neighborhood. So we finished up at Logan Avenue Galleria. Uh, I wanted to take my friends to this amazing restaurant down the street called Salud, one of the, my new favorite restaurants down there. We wanted to go down and meet a friend of ours named Jimmy. Uh, he's a great friend of mine. I've known him for years. He actually eliminated me on the show Netflix uh, that we did together. And uh, it was just a fun little gathering before we continued the rest of the day. It was super packed. The schedule was crazy, but I had things planned out for the entire day. I asked my manager and my girl to go back to the hotel while me and Tags left. When I was 16 years old, I was kind of sad because I didn't, get a chance to get a, my San Diego tattoo. And at 16, I was still too young to get it. When I left San Diego and I was in ninth grade, my friends who were in the gang with me were telling me that I needed to get my San Diego tattoo. I needed to represent, you know, out in Vegas. There's no way I was gonna get a hand poke tattooed in the back of the garage with somebody, especially at that age. But at 16, it really started bugging me that I never did. I moved to Vegas and I had this amazing life. Some ups, some downs, but I knew that San Diego was always my home. So this time on this trip, I wanted to make something really special. A few weeks before I did travel to San Diego, I got a chance to meet the amazing people at Travel Streetwear. 
Travel Streetwear headquarters is amazing. They have a skate shop in the front, they have the clothing store, they have their offices, but they also have a tattoo shop upstairs. And I felt that if I'm gonna get my San Diego tattoo, I might as well get it in the one of the places that I admired growing up. So we packed everything up after lunch, head on over, it was just me and Tags, and we wanted to go get tattooed. Walking in, it was just an amazing experience. I wanted to show my boy the gallery store, the art, just everywhere. We finally got a chance to go upstairs, and as we're gonna go to get my tattoo, with this awesome tattoo artist named Avocado Man, we walk upstairs and I see paintings from Mir One. You know, like, there's all these amazing artists that I admired. And now I'm sitting there looking at the originals while I'm about to get tattooed. Avocado Man walks in, kind of tell them what I wanted to do. So I went in and I got my Old English San Diego tattoo on my wrist. It was something that I was super excited to get, super happy, and if I didn't get it when I was a little kid, I was sure gonna get it now. Because San Diego is part of my home, and whether I live there or not, it's always gonna be part of me. So now it is on my skin. So it's the night of the show. I decided to, to dress up as best as I can in my own little weird style, but one of the most important things that I had to put on was my red cardigan Mr. Rogers sweater. It was something that I've been holding on to for a long time, and I felt that I never had the right to wear it, that I haven't earned that right. Uh, about a month before the show, I did post a picture saying that I have this cardigan, but I, I haven't earned it. Mr. Rogers passed away and his wife was gone, so there's no way that I was gonna have the right, or have somebody tell me that I'm allowed to wear this, because I felt like I didn't earn it. One day, I got a message on Twitter from Angela Santomero, which is the creator of Blue's Clues and Daniel Tiger. She worked directly with Mr. Rogers. She's seen my work, we've spoken a few times. She saw that picture and she wrote me, you have such an amazing heart, you earned the right to wear that sweater. But I still didn't wear the sweater, and I felt that I could only wear it in somewhere where it's gonna be a special moment and a special occasion, so what better than this show? We got there, we were doing the final setups. I had all the prints with me. We did a, a, we did a run of prints that we were gonna donate all the proceeds to Libre Buela Books down in San Diego. And I had to sign a number of them. I was waiting for Marcos, my friend, to arrive, because we were gonna be signing together. He had his chair right next to me and we were ready to go. So as I'm sitting there and I'm signing the prints, you know, one out of 50, two out of 50, the feel and the vibe of the room kind of changed, but in a beautiful, positive way. I remember looking at towards the door, and at that moment, Victor Ochoa walks in. I see his steps coming very slowly with his walking stick, and he's holding a huge book. And I just saw him, without saying anything, the entire room just erupted in cheers and applause that he was there. To me, it meant so much that this historical icon of this neighborhood that I grew up in was came to my show. He didn't have to. He didn't have to be there. And it meant so much to me. I saw him walk in and I just got up from my chair. I stopped signing prints. And I was like, Victor, thank you so much for coming. He looks at me, points at the chair next to me. He's like, can I sit down? I literally thought to myself, screw it. Marcos ain't here. He could wait, whatever. That's his seat. Victor walked over very slowly, sat next to me. Alex pulled out his chair. And he started showing us this book, this book that was made for him. And he told us, this is the book of my life. Everything that I've ever done is in this book. I have Alzheimer's, so one day I'm not gonna remember what's gonna happen. So when people ask me, what'd you do this day? I could turn to page 36 and tell them that's what I was doing. He has such an amazing soul and such a funny guy. And the fact that he was there just, I could, the, the show could have ended and I could have been ha completely happy. He spent the next two hours just hanging out with Alex, telling us stories. Marcos finally shows up. We're, we're doing the show, the show starts, and the entire time he's still there. And it's now the three of us on this table. And it was such an amazing experience. And I thought earlier after meeting him at the scaffold 
how are we going to top this? How is the day going to get any better? Well, it just did. We're blasting circles on the way here. So the show is in full swing. Uh, Victor's over here talking with Alex. Me and Marcos are just, you know, talking back and forward, meeting fans. So many amazing people showed up. A lot of people from the neighborhood. A lot of people that he knew. One of the best feelings was seeing my friends that came from junior high and high school. You know, we're still friends to this day. They came in support. And seeing them was just amazing. I rarely ever get to see them. One of the most important moments that happened that whole night was my sister came in. I call her my sister. She's not technically my real sister, but her name is Liliana. She dated my brother when I was in elementary school. Um, she was the first person to ever believe in me. She knew right off the bat that there was something special about me, and she kept telling me that every day. The relationship with my family now is a lot better than what it was, but growing up, it wasn't that good. I didn't get any support. They didn't really like my art. But she told them at a very young age, look out for this kid, he's gonna do something amazing. She's also the first person to call me a smart ass, which I kind of like that, because I never heard that word before. And when she called me that, I was like, yeah, okay, I'm that. Well, she showed up and she showed up with her daughter. I looked up from signing prints and taking pictures and I just remembered I got up and I just held her. I know that she didn't want to take time away from me signing and doing prints and doing all this stuff. And she, I felt her like almost letting go so we could end the hug and I wouldn't let her. It's been years since I've seen her. It took a very long time to find her beforehand. But the fact that she showed up and the fact that she was there with her daughter, who looks exactly like her. To me, I just felt like I wanted to cry, but I was in so much shock from all the amazing things that were going on that I just couldn't. I just knew that for the first time in my life, nothing else existed and I was extremely happy with myself. I'm happy now because of my family, because of my daughters, because of my fiance, because of my friends. But to be solely, completely happy with myself, that was the first time. The amazing night that we worked so hard for was finally coming to an end. Just the show part. Now it's time to celebrate. Now is the time for me to hang out with my friends that I haven't seen in a very long time, introduce them to my new friends and my new family, and get to enjoy the night. It was such an amazing experience. I'm so glad that I was able to do it. And I was able to do it with a purpose, to give back to the neighborhood that saw me grow up. And they still do so much for the kids and the people in the neighborhood. Being able to do the show just was the solidification of the fact that I am now back in San Diego. I am back in this neighborhood. And I'm just excited to be a part of it. So after an amazing night, we still couldn't believe everything that happened. It felt like it was 48 hours and it was only like 24. We had to pack up and start getting ready to come back home. But before we did, I had to make a stop at the bookstore, at Libelula Books. They're the reason why I was there. They're the reason why I made the print because I wanted to make sure that I could raise profits to give to them so they could keep continuing helping the neighborhood. 
it just happened to be that right before we left and I pulled up, we all walked out of the car, we went to, straight to the, we went to the bookstore and the owner of the gallery was there talking to the bookstore owner and they were telling him about last night, how amazing it was, how much fun everybody had. And as we walked in, it was just too perfect. The kids were there, everybody was there, the store was full and I was able to tell them what we did and they were super excited and grateful. And I told them about the book that I read. See, the night before, after the show ended, there was a little impromptu reading of my newest book, I'm Not Okay Today, right in the middle of the street, in front of everybody. So I asked them, would you mind if I do a reading of that here today with you guys? They were like, of course. So they sat me down on their couch and pulled up my phone and I read the book. Have you ever felt like you're in a funk? Have you ever woken up and just felt off? You have no idea why, but you kind of feel out of it. As adults, we tend to hide it and we tend to cover it up, whether it be work, whether it be work, you know, working out, drugs, alcohol, whatever it is to ignore that feeling. And we kind of do a bad job about it, but we still do it. But imagine being a kid and feeling that way. Can you really go up to your parents and tell them I don't feel okay? They're gonna look at you and ask you if you have fever, if you're nauseous, and you're just gonna tell them, I don't feel okay. So many times kids are told that they're meant to be seen and not heard. And honestly, I really hate that. Because being a child is already confusing enough. So when you have these feelings that you can't even understand, it's even harder for you. I wrote this book called I'm Not Okay Today. And I'm gonna read it for you guys right now. I woke up this morning and I wasn't feeling okay. Don't really know what's wrong with me. It just feels like a strange kind of day. I wasn't sad. sad. I wasn't mad. I just didn't know what to do or say. I don't like feelings that I don't understand. I just know that I don't feel okay. I was thinking and thinking, but it just made me more scared. Should I tell my family and friends and if I do, would they even care? I don't want to bother them or make them feel upset. Maybe if I ignore them, this feeling is something I'll soon forget. Maybe if I don't think about it, it'll quickly go away. I just don't know what to do. I just know that I'm not okay today. Maybe if I start drawing or playing games or running real fast, this feeling won't be able to catch me because it surely cannot last. So I played and I ran and I used all my imagination. I pretended to be a pirate. I was an astronaut. I was the king of my own happy nation. I was pretending to smile to be happy and joyful today. I did everything I could to forget that I don't feel okay. But it seems like no matter what I do, this blah kind of feeling won't leave my side. So I get up and go to the place where I like to hide. I cried and I screamed till I ran out of things to say. I started thinking something's wrong with me. Why can't I just be okay? All my friends seem to be happy. They don't feel the way that I do. What have I done to deserve this? I just know, I that, know that I'm feeling blue. I don't want the ones that love me to be disappointed in me because I'm not feeling okay. Should I pretend to go smile for others and just go about my day? Should I pretend to be happy? Should I pretend to be well? Should I continue to put on a show and hoping that others can't tell? Should I just hide forever so I don't make my friends upset? Should I go far away until one day about me they'll forget? I really don't know what to do to fix me. I've become better today. I really feel like people can feel broken. I just want to be okay. You know, I feel like maybe this is it. I'm always going to feel like I'm a slump. Maybe I'll pack my things and go live in the city dump. Live amongst all the things that are broken, the things that just don't matter. I'd rather be okay, not okay alone. So I, don't. Me sadder. I will live alone in this new home of trash, this dump where I get lost more and more every day. I will finally be in a place where it doesn't matter if I'm not okay today. Right at that moment, my closet door opened up, letting the bright sun, sunlight shine on my face. It was mommy and daddy. Where were you? We were looking for you all over the place. We looked for you in your room, in your backyard, in the kitchen, under the stairs. We looked for you everywhere. You had us both really scared. At that moment, daddy said, What's wrong, little one? You, you look, look like really you're really upset. upset. What's bothering you today? With tears running down my cheeks, I said softly, I don't know, Daddy, I just don't feel okay. I try really hard to figure out what's wrong with me. I'm scared because I don't know what's going on inside. I just won't want to go far away to a place where be not okay by myself and hide. I don't want to bother you two. I don't even understand why. This feeling is so overwhelming. It just makes me want to cry. What's wrong with me? Am I broken? Am I weird? Am I strange? Is there some place you can get a better child that's not as messed up as I am? Like a return to kid place where I can get exchanged? 
so sorry for feeling like this. I wish I could make it go away. I'm sorry I'm not perfect. I'm sorry I'm not okay. I closed my eyes and sadness overtook me with tears flowing like an open garden hose and right when I felt at my saddest, I felt something come close. Daddy put both arms around me while mommy held my hand. She wiped the tears from my face and said, I'm so proud of my little man. Proud. How could she be proud, I thought, with confusion? Did she not hear what I said? I am broken, not okay. Something is wrong with my head. She looked at me with eyes full of grace. My father held me tighter with a smile upon his face and he said, Son, no one's perfect. We all have our good days and our bad. Some days we feel happy. Some days we feel sad. Some days mad. Some days blah. No day is ever the same. Some days we all have feelings that we can't really explain. Just know that we love you and always will care. And never feel alone because with the ones that love you, you can always share. Mommy said that no matter the feeling, confusing or not, we will always be there for you because our love is what you got. Daddy said to me, we both feel like that from time to time. You're not broken. You're not strange. It's just not true. You're perfect the way that you are and there's no better child than you. It's okay to feel feelings. You don't have to ignore or pretend they aren't real. It's okay to laugh, to cry, to be proud of all that you feel. It's okay to share what's inside you. You really don't need to fear it. And those who care and love you, I guarantee you, we all want to hear it. Your feelings are valid, they matter, they're true. They're as unique and as special as the little boy so much, we love so much and that is you. So I held my parents close and finally felt like I can share my feelings and all the things that I have to say. But most important of it all, I've learned that it's perfectly normal to not always be okay. 40 pages and I'm, page, I'm on page six of Illustrated. Okay, we got this.